everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I've got a 30 minute session that I'm doing for a client. There's also a painting that comes along with the goals. So I'm going to show you the painting. Okay, it's a dragon and a castle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read the goals here. I'm really excited to see what we come across in your energy field. There's something very colorful about what you're expressing. It's not just the painting, but these goals have a lot of color to them. All right, I'm going to read here. And it's just so cool to connect with you again. Okay, it says, hello, Abby. I don't know if you remember me, but you did help me a lot in a lot of ways since we got connected a few years ago and still do with all your amazing gifts. <laughs> Thank you. The first thing you helped me with was a soul journey, which was written at the time because I used to do my psychic sessions through like typed documents instead of video recording. All right. And at a certain point in the journey, you fall on what looked like a version of hell with a girl and were caught in midair by this funny looking dragon that is supposed to rule that land. Then something happened and you were not allowed to see or know what that interaction was, but would come back later. Thing is, recently that came back. There's a woman in my life that is being really influential. She painted that dragon I sent and is also curious. I want to step on my path as a healer. I have been inspired a lot by Purple Flame. So I would like to heal or know what to work on to be a channel of the Purple Flame and feel complete and balanced again. I hope that whatever the message may be, it may give something to other people too like many other videos gave to me. All right. All right, I'm going to relax here. I love the direction that you're taking. <sighs> Purple flame, dragons. <laughs> it sounds awesome. Okay, getting tuned in here. I'm down a ways like I could be up there but for some reason I'm down here and down here I'm literally an observer sort of floating and looking in on a place where I'm also standing and where I am is also where you are so we're working together as one and down here there's the color yellow it actually looks like like a boardwalks made out of wood and then there's sort of a wall that's also made out of wood it doesn't it's not like a room though it's like if you were to cut a house in half and a house that's really tall and made out of sort of old wooden boards um, it kind of looks like this so you could be at the top but you're down here at the at what would be the bottom of the structure and it's just, there's a yellow in here and it's not joyful. It's not happy. It's kind of, there's kind of a poisonous element to it. Um, like a snake venom in a way. But it really passes itself off as like soft and marshmallowy, like a, like a milkshake or something. But when I tap into it, it's there's an element of poison that's sort of diluted into what is this substance, this yellow substance. But it's like milkshake um, texture. So it's not perfect. It's not like the best milkshake of my life because it's taking life away from me. So there is an element of toxicity to it. It's not thick with it. It's not completely concentrated. It's like a little bit hidden beneath the surface, but it's still there. It's like um, slowly killing somebody with arsenic over 20 year period of time or something like this. It's still toxic. And I ask you what, what does this space mean to you? And why, why are you why are we here? What does this have to do with the dragon and the purple flame and being a healer? You can't leave this. I mean, you're kind of glued and stuck in here. I 
I say the only reason why you're glued stuck in here is because you're holding on to something that you need to let go of. This is not an easy thing to let go of. I have to leave this observer because I'm I'm both what is like an observer and talking at the same level. I, it's, <laughs> I, I only need one perspective right now. It's too many perspectives. <laughs> so I'm going to go into, you know, we're going to be standing in the same um, shoes so I can see through your own eyes. Yeah, you're... So you're looking through the yellow through it and there's something on the other side. However, um, you aren't looking in all directions. You're not open to all the other possibilities. And there has to be flexibility. You have to learn some element of flexibility because you're very stiff and stuck in one place looking in one direction. An environment that's not particularly thriving. But you can't let go. It's like a tunnel vision. I see there's something of a of like a heavy duty rope. It's like something having to do with a boat and a dock. And there's a fog on the water. It's got kind of an eerie, creepy element to it. Gosh, this is... So even me going into what this looks like, there is a very dense... I don't want to put this... Like, if space itself um, was not free, what would, it, what would air look like if you weren't able to move through it? you would, it would, I mean, it would just be a clear density and you wouldn't be able to move through it. So we're separated from what you're looking into. If I go into it, it's like air that's completely dense. This has to be shattered. This has to be let go of. It is keeping you completely stuck in one direction, in one place. And that place is, is not a thriving place for you. I'm still learning about it and it's it's a bit mysterious still because there's so much stuck energy. I mean, I can't just fluidly move through it. Okay, this is I'm going to have to shatter this energy. What I'm going to do is send a ripple of sound through it. A really loud vibrational sound like if you could amplify the sound of a singing bowl I'm going to send an amplified sound, like a singing bowl sound that's sort of draw, like a long time and amplify it in order to vibrate the energy of this space to shatter it so we can actually understand it. Everything's getting just too stuck. You, you don't like, you have an aspect of you that does not, is not liking this idea. This is a manipulative side of yourself. And it is a dragon, actually. But this dragon, <laughs> it's sort of, it's it's not your typical dragon. It kind of looks a little demonic. Um, it has cat-like legs and it stands upright. And it has like a dark, I don't know, purplish black skin. It's got kind of a lizard-like face, but it's rounded on the face and it has a long forked tongue. It has spikes that kind of come down the back and a tail, but it doesn't have any wings. It has sort of small Tyrannosaurus Rex type arms, but it has really strong legs. Like it could run really fast, like an ostrich or something. And this being is incurred, it's almost like hypnotic. It just seems to have a complete and direct connection to you where when it speaks, you are paused and you just receive, receive, receive the information and you're just completely paused. And then it's like nothing ever happened, but something did happen. 
And that is not, the, you do not want, that being is keeping you locked in place. And that has to be seen and that has to be acknowledged. You really have a hard time fighting back. You have a hard time conquering that. I mean, it's almost pleasant in a way. So you ever get that like really great stare where you just like, you just suddenly are staring and it's like, wow, this feels really good to just stare for some reason. <laughs> Don't break my stare. Just let me stare. Don't break my stare. <laughs> It's like you go into this like really nice stare and when it's talking to you, it's like, it's somehow like, it's, there's a joy to it. There's like a pleasure to it. It's just like great. Uh, and everything turns off as you're receiving this. It would be kind of like a download of information because you're absorbing information in and this just stops you. It stops you from thinking and feeling and going in any direction, and it feels nice. But you aren't aware of this. Wow. All right. We're going to have to break down some major, 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 major stuff. <laughs> Because for you to start working with Purple Flame, we got to clear this out. <laughs> There's a lot of buildup here. There's a lot of just energy junk, but it's easy to access energy junk, okay? And if it's easy to access, we can break it down and let it go, okay? There's always stuff beneath the surface, but this, we can access this. It's right there, right first thing when I come into your energy field. So that means it's very influential on what you're going through in your current life right now, okay? It's very, it's influencing very much so your day-to-day -day life balance. The deeper, the deeper and deeper and deeper we go, it, it's kind of like older stuff that still affects this balance, but a little bit different. But I'm just gonna, I just want to keep looking at this here. Yeah, it's like the tiny little voice inside yourself is saying, I'm ready to be a healer. And that's the little voice that got through to get this session here. Because you are kind of on lockdown. You have a chunk of yourself that is on lockdown with this odd connection. Still fig trying to figure it out. What does it mean? How to get here? What do we, what do we got to do with this? I have to help you see it. And I'm not, I mean, obviously we're talking, you're going to see it just through us, this session, but your deeper essence that is vulnerable to that, I have to get that part of you to see it. It is just, it also kind of reminds me of, you know, Worm Tongue in the Lord of the Rings, how he kind of cast a spell on the you know, on that king, kind of cast a spell and he, he just couldn't see, he couldn't even have control over himself anymore because Wormtongue was so in influential. This being, I'm still making sense of, what is this? Is this a real other? Is this you? Is this something outside of you? What is this? <laughs> but it's very influential. Very, very influential like that. I'm still learning about it. All right, I'm going to send more amplified singing bowl. I <laughs> like I'm like amplifying the singing bowl sounds. I don't know. I, I have other people appearing here now and they're kind of elf like and they're singing odd pitches. And they're like uh, water beings as well. There's something about water and their connection with water bodies and the pitches that they're using. They have an elvish type energy to them. This is also to break down um, what is some kind of spell that is cast over your conscious. It's like you're hypnotized. There's a lot. There's a, more of these elvish like beings that are appearing here. Something like I mean, there's a lot. They're like 18. 
and they all wear white and there's something a bit blue on the front and they have these shoulder pads that come up kind of um, and then come down they're just, they're just unique looking shoulder pads on their outfits and there's males and females they came here to help you because you are already working with this purple flame but it's in a very it's in a place inside yourself that is out that is disconnected from this but this has so much influence on so much of you more than you could imagine like it's it blowing my mind so you have this like little cubby hole of safe space where you're working with what is like elvish beings um that are also connected to water energy and you're working with them already when it comes to purple energy purple flame this has to be destroyed. This has to be bro broken down, disconnected. The hypnosis has to stop in order to expand this space into what is like your day to day. So it's going to feel like no, like it's all around you, within you. Everything, every part of your being is connected to this and to these other beings that are just, they love you. They want to help you. It's, it's breaking him down. So slowly breaking him down. I can feel it. This, this is a major impact on your third eye and crown. Major impact. I don't know if you've ever seen Adventure Time, but there's this episode with King Worm. And King Worm is, is sort of um, infiltrates your dreams and slowly just sucks you dry. Um, and he goes, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> he sends this like energy vibration and it sort of hypnotizes you in your dream and you're kind of stuck in his dream world. This being is also doing something and of this kind. So these pitches, the singing bowl, this energy is shutting this being down slowly, but surely it's exhausting him. So he can't hold his ground at the same level, not even close. Just goes to show how much strength he came to the, the table with. We're still breaking this down. And now I'm able to finally talk to this odd uh, dragon-like being. And I and now I can finally, I touch him on his temple and I look into his eyes and third eye, although he's not looking at, into my eyes. And I tell him, you must let go now. You must let go now. He, he's getting angry and bitter towards you. He's getting very exhausted and drained, but he's using anger and older, a lot of anger in order to stand his ground. It's impressive, to be honest. I mean, he's channeling pure anger in order to stand his ground to stay... But we're all just continuing to stand our ground. There's a lot of us standing our ground against him. He's not going to hold out much longer. It, you're almost, you've almost broken. It's almost broken. All right. You're almost not hypnotized by this frequency anymore. You're almost free of it. You're, 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 you're about to see, okay? This feels like a twin brother. This feels like a, you know this, who this is. I don't know that's necessarily you. It feels like it could even be, I don't want to call it a twin flame, but it's like a twin brother. It's a very close relation to your own soul. I don't know why it, it, he's so dead set on, he's got a lot of anger towards you. Man, this is getting very exhausting because as you're breaking free, it's almost like it can't, it's unfathomably exhausting to break free from this. Like you haven't had a natural sleep in a long time. Okay, the, the, we're doing a really great job because this... I'm almost able to access more information about what does this mean? Why is it like this? Who is this brother soul? What, where is his anger coming from? 
Try to get some more information. Okay, yeah, not very nice. Okay, hold on. This is not you. This is him. He's just so angry. Yeah, so I'm going to go, I'm going to just figure this out. Those elvish beings are kind of taking this you who's very exhausted and they're just surrounding you with their sounds and it's like sound healing and they're putting you in some kind of an orb of protection. They're finally able to get you broken free of that. So I just want to let you know you're going over there with the elvish people and I'm going to go understand this because this has to be brought into balance so that way you can move on. <laughs> Both of you can move on <laughs> and that then then it's done. Okay? It's done. We don't want to leave any loose strings. <laughs> so let's see what his deal is. Oh man, he is he's just like I mean, it's almost like his eyeballs are being squished like grapes and there's juicy blood coming out of them. And this is taking me to a pretty dark place. And I'm just touching his heart immediately. And I'm saying, you're free. This is not where you live. This is not where you live. You can't let go. He's showing me this is the part where I saw you, like you can't let go, he can't let go. And now he's sort of not able to let go of you kind of thing. This is a very close relation to your own soul. And I tell him, yes, you can let go. You can say, I am done with this. You can say that I am done with this. Or you can stay here for all eternity and feel miserable and want to feel miserable. But is that really what you want? All right, there's some more weird. This is another message. This is in connection to him. There's some um, conversation about you. And again, it comes back to the third eye and crown, okay? And it really relentlessly does not want you to be free to use your third eye and crown. It's showing me there's patterns of what is like light that move through your like etheric mind um, in order to keep you like a frequency fence from accessing the energy that you're wanting to access having to do with purple flame. All right. But you somehow you were drawn towards the connection that inspired that to become a reality because they don't have no beings or soul brothers or sisters have the ability to just put things here unless you agreed to it okay I don't I still don't know I feel like you were there was a manipulation that brought that into being and maybe even the idea that this was going to protect you but and in a way yeah <laughs> Not seeing with your third eye and crown is, is going to help you feel more um, tuned into the human world. So it protects you from awakening, which can be extremely overwhelming. The pathway of enlightenment is flipping hard. So yeah, it can definitely help you just to stay more tuned into what we understand is real here. But you don't need it anymore. You don't need that because you are ready to use your third eye and crown. And I feel that this could become a quite a substantial like time for you of opening up. These lights, these movements of light are really foul. They burn, they, they have very bad intentions. I mean, it's very, I don't come across this every day, just so you know, like this is a pretty unique situation. 
And but when I touch them, it's I can tell like the information here is not um, helping you thrive. It's like the arsenic over 20 years will eventually be the end, right, of you. But this, it's like this pattern of light energy has this kind of, it's bad. It's not healthy. It comes from his anger. He channels anger, like up through his feet, through his legs, into his body. He channels anger. And he almost is tapped into an infinite source of it, which is what makes him incredibly powerful. But he can be broken just like, he can be broken down just like anybody. I'm still t t retuning his energy because he, he's got some weird obsession with you. Is it because his life is, I mean, so dark and dreary and that, like, he wants your life to be dark and dreary too? Like, is he jealous or something? There's a lot more to this story. Some sort of gr rotten corpse. Fleshy, rotten corpse that I'm looking at. I'm feeling his anger here too. There's something about brothers. I mean, literally brothers and some other life. It does have kind of... um. It's got like a, a wizardy um, fantasy castle and um, dragon and Merlin, the wizard type. There's something type energy like this and it's a castle. Like um, I see rings, really nice rings on fingers, um, a really beautiful crown. It's, he is burning on fire. I mean, he's like uh, really dark um, ideas, dark intentions. He is still not letting go of that. <laughs> but this has to come to peace because we need, when we can heal his heart, we're healing also your heart. And we're setting you both free to move on. <laughs> Literally. That's important. That's very important. I'm just going to go talk to his higher self. <sighs> Boy, I've got to go a long ways to get to, to get to his higher self. His higher self has not had, a, like, this has been kind of a clogged artery to his higher self. And higher selves love when their parts come back so that they can heal and, and rebalance and tune into new inspirations his higher self it's i don't even feel like his higher self is necessarily um participating in our world in our experience of reality it's a different type of reality it's more like a fantasy reality and his higher self does work with dark energies that doesn't that doesn't mean, i mean higher selves are infinitely um part participating in a lot of different um roles so some um have aspects of themselves that play the darker roles some play the lighter roles some play both sides of a fence it's what creates diversity in a single you know soul or a higher self like higher self is an incredible consciousness but so is a soul like but I, he it does have some darker sides, and he actually has a face of a bird. And he has black feathers, but it's like a, the, like a hawk. It's like looking at a hawk with black feathers. And he stands like a man. 
and he shows me seeds of light, but it's um, information that he's sending through what are like um, threads of connection between the higher self consciousness and this, this brother soul. Um, and he snuffs out that information because he's choosing to attach himself to a certain type of energy and he doesn't want to let go. But the higher self continues to send seeds of information and will always do this. Because eventually these seeds do get through. They do eventually reach um, a part within that soul to inspire a new pathways. And the higher self is just ridiculously patient. I tell him I'm putting this being, I need to somehow contain this because I can't let, this energy cannot come in contact with you because you don't need that anymore. And I was trying to see if maybe there was something we could do to bring balance. But at this time, what I'm going to do is just put him, put all of this, this space, this Tyrannosaurus dinosaur <laughs> um, slash uh, dragon um, who's kind of attached to what is like a muddy beach and a broken down tower and the sort of castle energy and it's very dark here it's just channeling in anger and I'm just putting it into a con energetic container it's just like putting it into a box But I'm filling it with seeds of light. So I'm growing a Garden of Eden in here that is relentless. It won't ever stop growing. And this will give him an opportunity to shift his energy because he needs to let the love and the light in. And so he can change, so that he can transform. And have new experiences that he actually does want deep down inside. So I'm just continuing to grow, like, I'm just putting infinite seeds in here. So this muddy beach is turning into a Garden of Eden. Like, everything is growing with vines and flowers and trees and stuff like that. And the sky is turning into sunlight, and there's sometimes it rains, and there's rainbows. There's all types of animals here. And I'm telling him he needs, it's, it's time to let go. It's time to let go. time to take a break. It's time to explore something new. <sighs> he is changing. I can feel it inside my heart and inside my third eye and it's almost like the left side of my face. And it's like also my left ear. <laughs> He's actually, I mean I'm shown time passing giving him a chance within time to actually receive this change in energy. I'm bringing in echoes of his higher self and I'm really amplifying the seeds and messages that the higher self has been sending. You see how important it is that we help each other? Imagine, like, if, if we all just help this soul. So I'm going to bring the part of you that's been studying Purple Flame, and I'm just going to um, share that love in here, okay? So that he can receive this love. And I'm showing it him that this love is on the inside of himself. And it's getting brighter He is, he is shifting. He's not channeling anger, but he is pretty exhausted. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna just really quick go check on you because this, this is a perfect stopping point. So we'll just let that continue. All right, he's in a nice um, energet energy space, full of love and seeds of light and inspiration and support lots and lots of energetic support and echoes of the aspect of you that has been working with this purple flame um 
is is also echoing within his own heart and aspects of his own higher self those seeds are being amplified just continue to support um a healthier experience for him a letting go a time to move on to something that is softer and kinder and loving and so we'll let that continue to do its thing over here okay that way you can go do your thing and heal over here because you both need a break from each other's energies. So let's go see what you're up to. Yeah, you're resting. And you have what is like 18 elvish looking people. There's males and females. They don't necessarily talk. They just seem to express sounds sometimes. And they're actual just like frequencies and they just say like a sound sometimes but they seem to speak through each other's energies and there's definitely the element of water i can feel the element of water really loud in their energies and what they're expressing to you and they're just watching over you and in i see you i experience you as resting they're also sending signals to me about you in this now, in this most present moment. And they're sending um, sounds and water um, energies to purify your third eye and crown. To open this up. Man, you are so ready for, uh, like, I can't, all your chakras are, there's so much just you're ready for, okay? <laughs> all right. This is really a amazing accomplishment. So just let these energies do the work, okay? There's nothing you have to do because we just did it all in your energy field. So this 30-minute session, this actually has a, um, a way of echoing this energy transformation, echoing over the next like week or two, okay, really strongly. And it's echoing in an infinite space, but your physical body is also digesting and processing it and moving and reshaping its, uh, itself, okay? So if you feel sleepy or if you feel emotional or you're having some weird dreams, that's just how your body's processing the energy. So just take it easy, okay? Drink lots of water. That always helps. And just be patient with it, okay? <laughs> All right. Thank you so, so much. It was so great to connect with you again. And thank you for sharing. And uh, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right. Have a great day, everyone.